Hi, I'm Darren. Hi, I'm Gordon. And, and we're, we're the two, two gay reefers. Hey, reefers, we're here today and we're talking about the jar reef. I'm in a jar reef video. <laughs> uh, it's a rainy day, so I thought, what better day than to restart the jar reef, which is what we're doing today. So the jar reef's been going along really, really well, but it's had a lot of issues. Well, not a lot of issues, but a lot of cosmetic sort of issues, just with the way the system's set up and how it works. And it always, uh, although when we take footage of it, it always looks perfect, uh, but that's the way it's meant to be. When it does get neglected a little bit, you get that salt creep around the outside, it does just start looking a bit uh, crappy in the, back, in the corner. The water would bubble up, evaporate, hit the lid, drip down the sides of the lid, and then down the outside of the bowl, producing all this salt cream. So that was one of the big main design flaws of it. <laughs> Hopefully the new design bowl and new lid that we're gonna put on it is gonna uh, prevent some of that salt creep from happening and uh, make it look nice and clean all the time. Uh, to prevent that this time, we're actually gonna have the lid inverted on top of the bowl. Yeah. The other main issue was there's no real aquascape to speak of. It's just a heap of rocks just put in there with coral on there. To be honest, the jar isn't big enough to actually have any sort of aquascape in it. So we're upgrading to a much bigger bowl that we can it's actually... It's too much bigger. It's probably about the same water capacity. Maybe mm. a little bit bigger, but it's, uh, it's rounder. I think it's bigger. I don't know. <laughs> what would I know? <laughs> so with the reef bowl we're actually going to do a central aquascape and have a bit of sand around it so it's a nice little bommy in the middle of the bowl and then have the corals growing off of that. And we're actually going to have the, the bubbler coming in from underneath that so it actually produces the bubbles sort of around it instead of just coming up in one spot on one side and obviously give us somewhere to hide the heat a little bit better. One other issue that we've had, and it's been an ongoing issue, is just constant bubble algae doing a whole new scape, whole new rock. And there's nothing in there that could potentially eat that bubble algae as well. So the only thing, there's only corals in there at the moment. Is there any snails? Yeah, there's a couple of snails. Okay, but... there's a couple of snails, but uh, there's nothing there that's going to uh, potentially eat the bubble algae. I've uh, been more of a mixed reef, so we're going to have the LPS and softies down the bottom with the SBS up the top and see actually how well this bulb can grow SPS corals. Anyway, enough waffling from us, let's get into it. So we're gonna start aquascaping. So we've got two items to put into the base of the aquascape, uh, that being the air stone and the heater. Uh, we're actually using all old coral type stuff for this aquascape, plus a few little uh, real reef rocks because, hey, didn't want to go and buy some more. So, I've tacked together a few coral skeletons for the top of the bommie. So this is going to be the main area for coral growth for all the SPS. We're going to actually have that balanced on this, so it's going to be a bit of a plug attaching it to the base. So I'll be able to take this off to clean and maintenance and things like that. Then I'll build a base around the heater and the air stone, which this will sit on top of. So to bond everything together, we've got this coral crete. So I'm going to give that a go and see how well that works. This is a gray color, so it will match blend in with some of the white skeletons we have here. It's usually a two part epoxy in there. So wearing gloves, tear off a piece, mix it all together until it's one colour. Having a look at this one, this actually cures within 24 hours, either submerged or out of water, and it's good for fresh or salt water. We'll go through and test this out as well. Let's open it up and have a go. So the coral creep worked really well for the plug of the aquascape. It then got very dry and crumbly. So I didn't use it for the rest of the aquascape. We used polyp lab glue instead. 
I found out later a good tip is that you, if you mix the coral creep with some tank water, it actually makes it more pliable. It does take longer to dry, but it's easier to work with. So I might try that in future. So we've torn down the jar reef and we're here setting up the reef bowl. So this is the bottom structure of the aquascape. As you can see we have the air stone and the heater underneath. And then on top will be the rest of the structure. So the air stone is the principal uh, device used for flow in the tank and also filtration. So believe it or not, the air stone acts as a big skimmer and it basically carries all the gunk up to the surface and then it collects on the side of the bowl. So it's a great little wave maker and skimmer all in one. So the power of the jar reef comes mainly from the bulb we use. So the bulb we're using is an ABI 12 watt Tuna Blue Par 38 LED. So we have a link for this in our description down below. Quite a nice affordable light and it goes into any light socket. This one is an IKEA lamp and we've got it set so it's about 12 inches from bottom of the bulb to the top of the bulb. Well, there you have it. We've done the reef bowl successfully. Yay. We'll finish. Took Mostly a while. him. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed our reef bowl adventure. If you have, like, like comment, comment, and subscribe. subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, be excellent to each other and keep it salty, everyone. Bye for now. See you guys. Thank you.